Hello everyone and welcome to the Singer 99 restoration series. My name is Jen, I'm with Sewing Machine Rehab and I show you how to restore your vintage sewing machines. This series is on the Singer 99 and through this series of videos, we are going to fully disassemble, clean and reassemble a Singer 99. A couple things that we need to notice right from the beginning is that not all Singer 99s are the same. That's why you see more than one machine sitting back here right now. When Singer manufactured the 99, they started in 1911 and they carried on all the way until late 1950s, early 60s. So there were modifications to the machine as time went on. We're gonna go over what some of those differences are. So right from the beginning, you'll know which 99 you have. And then as I go through the process of showing you how to take apart and put your machine back together, you'll know whether you need to follow the videos for the early 99 or the late 99. And that's how we'll tell them apart. No matter what model 99 you have, you're going to love it. And I'm excited to show you how to work on it and restore it so it's sewing beautifully for you and you can use it every day. You're not going to see me a lot after this video. I'm mostly going to be showing you the machines and how to work on them. I might pop in and say hi every once in a while, but I think that's enough for now. Let's look at these machines, look at their differences and determine which machine you have so you'll know which videos you want to watch. Here are the two 99Ks that I have chosen for this series. In the back, we have a Spartan, and we'll talk about that just for a moment as to why you could follow along to this series if you had a Spartan sewing machine. This 99K, the one here on the right, is one of the early 99s. It was actually manufactured in 1922. The case that would cover this was what they called a bent wood case. I do not have the lid to this. My customer who has loaned me this machine for the video series kept that bent wood cover because they do not like to be shipped. So we just avoided that altogether. But we'll have this one, the early style. And what I want you to notice really quickly is that the tension assembly is different and the bobbin winder is different. And when we look at this up close, the light is different. Now, on your left is the late 99K. So as Singer made improvements to the 99 sewing machine, they changed the tension assembly so that it was the numbered dial which allowed users to sort of gauge where they were on their tension settings. And they also added a numbered stitch length regulator. So this tells you how many stitches per inch you're going to get when you're sewing and you were able to sew in reverse on this machine. The light is different, the bobbin winder is different. So this will be the late 99. Now if you have a machine that says 99 dash or 99K, that really has to do with where the machine was made. That's really all it means. So these 99Ks were made in Clydebank, Scotland. And I did quite a bit of research on this because when I first saw my very first 99, I thought the K had to do with the fact that it had reverse. But then when I started researching this 1922 99, I realized that according to Singer's records, it was still a 99K. So I do tend to agree with that has to do with where the machine was actually made. Now the Spartan in the back is a stripped down version of a 99. So let's look at each one of these machines so you know for sure which machine you have, an early 99 or a late 99. So the 1922 Singer 99 this machine is actually a little bit special because it had a upper aluminum body. I'm not sure about the base. It could be aluminum as well, but they made a few machines that at least the neck, if you will, was aluminum, which means out of all three machines I had on the table, this machine is the lightest. 
and boy can you tell a difference when you lift it up. But not all of the early 99s were made out of aluminum. They were the heavier cast iron. Now our telltale signs is the feed regulator here is not numbered. You simply turn it to adjust your stitch length. And as you got used to the machine, you kind of knew where you would go to get the stitch length that you desired. The bobbin winder is different. It has these little gears inside of it that all worked with a little worm gear here in order to make this bobbin winder work. But the way that the bobbin winder worked was the same on the early and the late models in the sense that when the bobbin was full, the bobbin winder would disengage. And so they kept that feature on both the late and the early models. However, they just look different. Finally, our tension assembly is different. There's no number dial here, and the little tension discs are smaller than what we see on the late 99s. Now, if I spin this around, I just want you to look at the light. This light is different. We will see on the late model 99, we have a much different light, and the way that it fixes to the machine body is very different. On the late model, it just screws in on one place, but this actually has a plate that goes up over the spool pin cover. And right here we have a little screw. It's just a few extra screws to get this actually onto the machine. But thankfully with the new LED light bulbs, having a light like this isn't such a big deal. They still can give you great light and they don't get hot to the touch anymore. This machine also does not have a traditional foot control. I'll spin it around. So as I said, a customer has given me this machine on loan just for this 99 restoration series. The first thing that I noticed is I have a plug for the motor, but there is no foot control. So this machine, when it was purchased, was purchased with a knee control. And what this does is if you see, there's a little hole right here, this connects in that hole and that knee control is how we would power the machine and turn the motor on so that we could sew. So a little bit different. That's why I have at least two machines for you here. Now let's look at the late 99. So here is our late 99K. And already we can see we have now a numbered stitch indicator plate. Our bobbin winder has the same feature of we engage the bobbin, we wind it when it's full, it disengages on its own, but we're missing those little gears that we saw on the earlier model. We also have a numbered tension dial. These are things that I think are pretty great. Although this machine is much heavier, so lifting it up onto the table isn't quite as easy. If we spin it around, we can see the light. Here is our light. It has been redesigned. It just fastens on in one place. So how we take this apart is going to be different than on the earlier 99. And you can see from the base, it's also a little bit different. No longer does it have the bent wood case that was so beautiful. This is a more modern square box case. Not as pretty in my opinion, but all 99s need a base to function in. So I'm thankful to have the base either way. This machine also came with your more recognized button style foot control. So We'll be checking this out and how it operates as we go through the series as well. Now that you've seen both the late and the early 99, let's look at that Spartan. So here we have the Spartan. The Spartan is basically a late Singer 99. However, Singer did not call it a 99. It's actually a 192K. This was made to be a machine that would cost the buyer less money. So how did they accomplish that? Well, there's no decals on this machine besides these words Spartan and then a few other little decals that say Singer Manufacturing Company made in Great Britain. We still have this wonderful numbered stitch regulator 
with the reverse feature where it says back tack, that's reverse. And on the late 99 I just showed you, it had the same thing. It went in reverse also. They changed the bobbin winder for this and it makes me think a lot of either the 301 or the Featherweight 221 bobbin winders. The spring away feature is gone now. So when your bobbin's full, this doesn't pop away. It's simple, just a little bobbin winding arm, you wind your bobbin, and when the bobbin's full, you move it out of the way on your own. Still though, the handy number tension and foot control on this machine. So internally, we're going to see a lot of similarities on the Spartan or the 192K that we see on the late 99s. So if you have a machine like this, there's no reason why you wouldn't find a lot of useful information in this series on the 99 that you could use on your machine. Finally, I'll point out really quick, they made the base for this machine. It was no longer wood, it's plastic. These get damaged so very easily. This machine was shipped to me and given to me by Bob Fowler, who also has a fabulous YouTube channel. And he sent me this machine to use in my series and he was so worried about this base breaking that he shipped it separate from the machine in a totally separate box. So these get cracked. Thankfully, you can find people who make bases for the 99 on eBay and Etsy. And if you're willing to make a little bit of investment, you can buy a new base for it that's nice and sturdy and won't break. And you do need it in order to sew with this machine. Remember, the Spartan also did not have a light. No light on the back of the Spartan. So you have to get creative and make sure your sewing space has some good lighting already because that was another thing they took away to make this more affordable for the consumer. So let's get all the machines back on the table. So here we go, our stars of the show, our early Singer 99, our late Singer 99, and finally the Singer Spartan 192K. Which machine do you have? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have one of these aluminum body 99s and does it just have a knee control or do you have the foot control for the machine? In our next video, we will start by actually getting these machines out of their bases and then removing the motors from the machines. They add a lot of extra weight. These two in particular are very heavy. So if we can get that motor off now, it's going to make moving that machine around so much easier. And then we'll also talk about some of the supplies that you might need as we go along. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so excited for the series to start and I'll see you guys again on the next one. Take care, bye.